podcast dedicated to uncovering and discovering the stories, lessons, and insights to help you be the hero of your own story. This podcast is brought to you by Reality Smash, a transformational studio that empowers purpose-driven entrepreneurs with disruptive technologies like ChatGPT and virtual reality to generate more revenue and create greater impact. Let's jump in with our host, Dylan Watkins, as he introduces today's guest. Welcome to the show. We are going to be talking a lot about ChatGPT, VR, and age tech. Alan Braun is a modern-day Renaissance man. Early in life, he was an elite member of the Israel Cyber Special Forces while wearing Stan Teasley, the founder of a startup funded by Apple Israel. He then went on to become a marine biologist with a master's in oceanography and published research on the cell biology of coral. With his research appearing in Al Gore's documentary in Inconvenient Truth, Alan then took a three-year certification of the Federick's body movement teacher while working as an online marketer guru, business accelerator strategist, helping identify growth strategies using technology and data. So without any delay, I'd like to welcome Alon. Thank you, Dylan. How are you? I'm good, brother. How you doing, man? I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm yes. happy to be in the show. Yeah, I'm happy to have you. I'm, I appreciate your background. It feels like we're in the same room together. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. My, <laughs> uh, my background is black. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, brother. I was excited. Um, you know, I had you before on um, as a podcast guest, and I know before we were talking a lot about AI and VR. So I wanted to invite you back on here to have a have a chat about this chat GPT that's taken the world by storm. So um, I really want to kind of dive in and and just get your your perspective on you know how you've been using and what you've been seeing going on with chat GPT. Uh, okay, very good. I love the subject. I'm researching that for the you know. I think for half a year, mm -hmm. I'm like into in chat GPT for about half a year using it daily. So I think that I'm a, it used to be like GPT three. So yeah. and the and me journey and the image generation. So I don't know for half a year, I'm really diving into that, using that, playing, thinking, thinking about the future, thinking about the past, you know, um, and especially like combining it with my model, you know, I have a book that I wrote about the entrepreneur's journey. And there is like some kind of a framework that I build that uh, um, dividing a business into like eight fundamental areas for in each fundamental area for the entrepreneur's journey. Um, I play with ChatGPT and how I can autom automate in a way or like uh, enhance the entrepreneur it's hard for me to say this word entrepreneur yeah. uh, using ai basically and how you can use it like chat gpt for different uh, parts of your business so I, I love that and i mean you know being a part of the the hero's journey framework and understand that everybody can be the hero of their own story and there and part of that is following a story and a narrative because that helps us understand and see things can you talk a little bit about the different sections of your book for the yes. hero's journey for entrepreneurship and and what about that does chat gpt help with like how does that help automate it is it understanding and reflection is it going deep is it getting started what does that what does that look like okay so let's uh, dive into a little bit yeah uh, so the the basis of the framework um it's about four different perspectives that required from the entrepreneurs to take when, when looking at any business, his own business or in life in general. The framework and the basic four perspectives, they come from integral philosophy. Uh, I don't know if you are, I guess you know a little bit about, about Ken Wilber and the work of mm -hmm. integral philosophy. And you have like perspective there in how you look at uh, life. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at it in subjective, in objective, or intersubjective and interobjective perspectives. And I can dive into the definition of them. But you do the same as entrepreneur. Now, um, I will I will start and touch each one of the perspectives. And the way I, I do it in the book, I divide um, the the perspective into input and output. So we have information coming in and we have information coming out and depend when we, when we, in what perspective and what shoes we put ourselves. For example, mm -hmm. in the perspective of a system. So this is a, this is actually the third quadrant, but it is, it's very easy to explain. You know, you put yourself in the, in the shoes of the product itself. 
Now, product itself, a system itself, you know, entrepreneurs need to look at the product. And, um, you know, the product, you know, you have developers are sitting and they building the product and you have like the tester testing the product. So I call it like development and testing. So, and these two input and output of a product, um, we can look and how we can automate using ChatGPT, for example. Um, so the developer, they can work in frameworks like Agile or different type of Agile frameworks. And, uh, you know, my favorite is a Scrum framework. And I got mm -hmm. actually a recommendation from Jeff Sutherland. The, he's the father of Agile and Scrum about my book. And uh, he said he liked it. And uh, so his support of the framework, of the Agile framework that I created is, uh, for me, I've, I'm very proud of that. And uh, so... I will get into, so this is one perspective, it's a system perspective, but on the other hand, we had the user perspective. So the entrepreneur also required to, to put himself into the user perspective, which is the objective. We call it the objective perspective. And over there, we have marketing, and we have a, something that I call feedback, which is collecting information back from the user. So this is other two functions. And... Uh, Another perspective is uh, the perspective of the team perspective. So you think of the team, you put yourself in the shoes of the team and the team, they need their, their thing. So the input for a team will be like, we call it reorient, which actually is the members of the team and the roles and information that they get from the vision, let's say like that. And the output is plans that they're building. So this is another perspective. Mm -hmm. And the first perspective, which is a, a the subjective perspective, which is a self, we call it. And this is like the ideas that come to the entrepreneur and how we express it. So everything have an input and an output. Now, if we put, a, let's look for, I, I will start from the last one I just said. Okay, so we have input of ideas and we have the output of expression. Output of expression is rather easy. What do you use ChatGPT for output of expression? It's a, this is like the, the most trivial usage is actually, you know, building articles. Mm -hmm. I, I today, you know, I, I recently created a, a, a portal, which is called agetech.com. And uh, why I say recently, because it's, I, I use ChatGPT a lot, because for me, it's like I, I, I will be judgmental about my English. I will be judgmental about the, the you know, my style of writing and the, you know, and the, Maybe I will be lazy to to like dive into and frustrated about diving or writing like long paragraph and articles on a daily basis. It's really, for me personally, difficult. Maybe if I do it in Hebrew, it will be easier for me. But in English, to to express myself, it's much easier with ChatGPT. So I, I just tell him, you know, you can you can ask him. I, I describe my idea to ChatGPT, and he and I, I I tell him I like write article in the style of the New Yorker, and. Uh, or, and also add a link and also crawl. And you can already ask ChatGPT to crawl another web page. So I give him a nature article and I tell him, okay, write a New Yorker article about that, but add uh, my own perspective on that, that I believe that this and this and this and this, you know, and, and uh, so I can add my moral and my values to the article. And, and it's beautiful. It's working very, very well. I love that. So just just putting a, a pause and a beat so that we can kind of reflect on this a little bit. One of the ways that you said you're using it is you're going to launch launch this website, this age tech website. Yeah. Part of the challenge is the fact that your your English you feel is you 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 could do better in Hebrew, so you're not as confident with your English. So mm -hmm. you were able to take an article, and now did you give it a link or did you just you copy and text the paste of, of the article itself? Because there's only so no, you can give it a link already. I think okay. in the early version in December, you cannot you couldn't give it a link, but right now they support the links. I don't know, I don't know even when they announce it. I've never seen an announcement, but it's working. Oh, that's fantastic. So, I didn't know that. So you so can you write can a chat. Crawl. You can mm -hmm. crawl it. So then you say, okay, um, I want you to I want you to crawl this website. Is that is that the prompt? Here's my link, and I want you to write my opinion on it based around my values of sustainability and um, life uh, longevity. Yeah, whatever come to my mind, you know, I, I have my own association. So I add my own association to the article, you know, it's like whatever I want to put into it. Yeah. So you just add. 
can you give me a concrete example so I can understand it? So say, just say this is, you know, um, I told it to do you say crawl the, this link or you say look at this link or what does that look, look like? at this link yeah it doesn't matter yeah. the language you can tell him look at this link just give uh -huh. him the link uh -huh. cool and then and then and then on the outside said now I want you to summarize it and then give me uh but put my own values and spin on what I would say about it so yeah, like I will say uh, um write an article in mm. the style of the New Yorker and look at this link and uh, add to it that I believe that this and this and this, that, uh, you know, mushrooms, I'm writing about, I don't know, how I just wrote like Lion's Mane article, uh, article about the mushroom Lion's Mane, that can help uh, cognition. So I, I added, and you can really grow it at your home if you like. So, you know, the original article doesn't talk about growing the mushroom in your home. It's cost like $20 to have a kit order to your home to uh, to grow the mushroom itself. So I added this information, for example. So when, when a senior person read it, I can add some context and some association that uh, and, and some useful information that ChatGPT will add into the article. So like, that's awesome. This is an example. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that's awesome. So that's that's one of the good use cases that you said use to help Expression. you. Expression yeah. and and you're talking about and one of the inputs of the self is I have ideas. Mm, I'm thinking about you know I want to write about cats because cats on the internet it's very popular. And I go ahead and I put that inside and then the output as I work with ChatGPT is whatever it outputs to me. Write an article about cats and mushrooms or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So how else? What are the other things that you're you've been okay? Using so for? if we look, yeah. if uh, I can, I can show you the book here. It's like this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have we're talking here about expression. So this is mm -hmm. the input, the yeah. gathering ideas, gathering ideas, and like being like in a receptive way, and like you know inspiration. Uh, so this is the input, like some ideas pop into your head, and the output, the expression. So I will not let's not touch the out. ChatGPT can help you to be creative. You can actually do that, but uh, I think that will be the most complicated part. From all the from all the journey, but we can look, for example, from the feedback. So user feedback. So somebody like write you an email. Somebody write you a review. So my customer like reach you out. Um, I don't know. It's like you know you have a. It's like easily you can you can just like um, automate, reading of any information that's coming to you and tell ChatGPT to rank it to see how important is. To run, how important is this feedback? So this is like really critical because if you're talking about like, so ChatGPT have amazing understanding of language. So whatever you write to it, and they can tell mm -hmm. him, hey, this is a user review. What do you think is the, the general feeling of the user? What do you think? Is he happy about my product or not? And this is a question you can ask. You just give him the text and ask this question and he analyze that. And then you can output, you can output from this, you can output like a, this will be an API call, so I can do it as an API call, and all the information coming in, it will be analyzed, and then go to the to the database as like a, a you know a critical uh, user feedback. So so the product team will look at that. So mm. this is a, a way for a company or to any business to to process incoming information from user, which is a big problem. I would imagine that'd be amazing for something like Yelp. Where you have all the the comments and people are getting feedback on those websites and be able it's to any actually... B2C website they have a yeah. lot a lot of information coming in a lot yeah. of chats the agent are talking there is customer support and they the CEO you know and people are in the management they have it's difficult for them to um you know you have many you have many customer agents sometimes you can have hundreds of them for a business so how do you process all this information so chat GPT and bots are like amazing, amazing way. This is this is the goal of the you know. Do you have it rank it like hey, uh, uh, ten being the most important, one being not important at all? Can you read this review and tell me how important this is? I should look at yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. this is okay. what you should do. This is what you you ask him to rank it from one to nine. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, just ask it rank it from one to nine. How important it is, and my values are the product <laughs> value are this and this and this and this. So rank it according to that, so yeah, you can yeah. make the decision. And also what it made me think about is I'm willing to bet because one of the challenges with ChatGPT is you can't, for the most part, give it really long blocks of text. But I'm willing to bet that if you then, if you actually put, like, for example, 
this podcast. It's going to be really, really long. I could, I could take it. I could throw this into Descript, have it get a really, have it kick out the really long text, put that on my website, and then give that link the chat GPT to crawl and then summarize the points of the podcast. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you can do that. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I have well, managed let's, to bypass. Let's find out. <laughs> no, there is a way to bypass. There's a, there is a way to bypass the limit. Yeah. Um, there is a way to bypass the 4,000 4, limit. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, I know there's a way to do it on the code side of things. If you're telling it to reference something on the code side, on the back on the API, um, if you say, hey, see section B, and section B is this giant block of text if you're doing custom training models. But I don't know about doing it on the, I don't know if you can do it inside the chat, chat GPT and how you get past that 4,000 limit. You basically, like you need to chunk it. It's called chunking. So mm. you divide it, uh, for example, my book. So you divide the book into chunks. And then for each chunk, you ask a question. And then you summarize all the summaries. So you ask him to summarize, you give him a question for a certain chapter, mm -hmm. and then uh, you take all the summaries of all the questions that he come and give make one summary from everything. So this is chunking. The code can do that. Um, it. And also you have like, I don't know, uh, what's the name of the site? Face? You know this? Uh, Facebook? Hugging face. Hugging face. What's ChatGPT doing on the side? Is, is ChatGPT OnlyFans? What we got going on? No, no, you have all this model. You know, there are like sites that uh, it's AI models, and and it's possible to um, it's uh, possible to to upload like a huge paper and ask a question. It's uh, already I have a bay ability to do that. I don't know. Oh yeah, I can yeah, give yeah. hugging face, hugging face. This is is it hugging face? Size. Okay, I thought I heard one like TDLR or something like that, but I don't know about I mean, hugging hugging face. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Yeah. It sounds weird, but this is, is it, okay, 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 okay. Long text. But you have a lot of AI models that okay, you can cool. use. Mm -hmm. So a uh, feedback. So we spoke about feedback. Feedback yeah. one way. Marketing, I guess it's obvious. Mm -hmm. Like how do you what do you do in the marketing side? So you. You know, you have all this copy and copywriting and marketing message. Uh, with with uh, marketing, one of, the few, one of the questions that I've gotten, I think I know the answer to it, but I'd love to get your take on it, is that some people go, yeah, but it's really generic. It doesn't have my voice, right? Like, they're like, I don't know how to give it my voice because I want it to come from me. Well, I want it to be sound like me, but not really come from me. So what would, what are your recommendations for people that are trying to help them find their voice with ChatGPT? No, so it's finding the voice. This is like the weird stuff. I don't know if you... Now, if you know your voice, so he need to know your voice, you need a training with your voice. Now, the question, how you train with your own voice? Because if you tell him, write it in Jordan Peterson's voice, he will manage really easily. Or if you ask about Joe Rogan, it can be really easily, but it uh, depends how famous you are and how much information you have, that, you know, how many articles you wrote online, then he, can, then he can actually imitate your voice. So it is possible, but he need to read a big text or big, like a chunk of data about your voice, about your own, you know, if you wrote a book. So for me, it's easy. I can use a book and then say, write it in the style of the book or yeah. like write it with the values of the book, because most of the books are out there. He, he sees many of them somehow. Yeah, yeah. It somehow crawls the books. I know that. I know I had I had this I had this uh, person on the podcast and uh, crazy neuroscientist, like really it was it was he was too smart for me it was very difficult for me to keep up and so i actually said hey what are questions you would ask a podcast guest based upon this book and that was actually a really good one that was a really fun one and so yeah, yeah. Yeah, i can go, and, go yeah and we actually I, I i for the full disclosure we, yeah. we're launching something called bookipedia bookipedia and this is like a it's an ai that uh, talk to you can talk to any book so you're just like giving a book name and you just discuss with the book, you get like information from the book, you get summaries. Instead of reading the book, you can actually just ask the questions that you want to say. You can ask, make me the plan, daily plan using the book. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Is, uh, and you can talk to the characters. We, we show them the like picture of the characters. Is it like, depend which kind of book, but this is a, it will be, it's a, the domain is book, bookipedia.co. Okay. It's actually Booky live right now, but it's oh, not it launched. So maybe it's a, I don't know if I should say about it, but fine. <laughs> now okay, it's okay. in there. <laughs> Bookipedia. Bookipedia.co. Yeah, I love it, man. It. That's, I mean, it's a great use case. I mean, because again, it's, it's all about this, this resource of saving time. 
mean, yeah. that's really what the AI does. It helps you save a ton of time. But the trick is trying, there's this learning curve, like trying to understand how to work with it best to be able to get that data. And so, yeah, the if you had a large body of text, you could always have it speaking that voice because it's already done a lot of heavy lifting. Other than that, I mean, yeah, there's other, I don't know any other ways you'd be able to do it. Have you thought about I, like, hmm. I can share with you uh, more perspectives yeah. and more directions using ChatGPT. For example, so we have the develop. The develop. Uh, so the develop is like a good example how you to use ChatGPT. You can tell him act as. So you know the command. You can tell him act as an agile scrum master. So you ask him to act as a certain profession. And then you ask him your problem. So let's say you have a team of developers and one of the developers is sick. And but he, I don't know, he have a, he's not, a, he's very slow, and the other one are complaining, and the, he's not coming to the morning, uh, you know, agile uh, stand up uh, routine that they do. I don't know, stuff like that. So you ask ChatGPT as a Scrum Master what you should do. So it's actually answering you the very good answers for every agile rule. So he's becoming like the agile Scrum Master, and this is good for like a, a dev team. Now, the advantage of that, and I don't know. I don't know if you try to use ChatGPT as a third party, meaning like, let's say if you have a conflict with somebody or you're not sure about some further decision, you ask him, hey, can you, what do you think <laughs> about it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually doing that, you know, with my son, you know, my son is six years old and he's using ChatGPT now and he's like, um, you know, I can tell him, listen, uh, for example, it's like last week I said, you know, if you act like that, I'm going to speak with your teacher. And uh, because now he, he have ability to use ChatGPT, and he, we ask him, is it okay for a father to ask about, to, <laughs> and he's like eight, is it okay for the father to consult with a teacher about a certain thing? And the, you get a very nice answer. The answer is no. For example, ChatGPT said, no, it's not. You first need to solve the problem yourself, and then you need to go to the teacher as like a, or to the principal. You, do, yeah. you should not do that. So yes, we yeah. ask it's like a third party you know uh, authority i love and that i think it's pretty good i actually say. did this i did something actually very similar right i uploaded my own like style and personality inside of there and then like i got in a fight with my wife and then i asked chat gpt why did i get in a fight with my wife uh, this situation because you kind of it said well based upon your values and things like that this is this is why you got in a fight i was like oh that is so interesting that was fascinating so then i went and showed my wife and she goes oh Okay, but because it didn't come from me, it came from my, yeah, my, exactly. you know, chat GBT version of me, it felt less like there was no, there was no uh, emotional, um, you know, uh, like attachment yeah. to that, right? Because yeah. it, exactly. it was this is... un unbiased. Yeah. And also you can tell it, you know, once you know the name of frameworks, you need to know name of frameworks. For example, nonviolent communication, you know, this uh, Marshall Goldberg framework, nonviolent mm -hmm. communication. So you can act, tell him act. Is Marshall Goldberg, you know, a non-violent communication advisor. And uh, this is the situation. Tell me what you think. So you need to refer him to a framework that you believe that is uh, good enough for to resolve the situation. So this is according to your values. And so I love frameworks. And my book is a collection of all the frameworks, basically. And uh, so I, I just move, I just like... I use a framework and I ask ChatGPT to act as a, as a framework consultant, for example, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I solve the situation. Do you actually say I act as a framework consultant? Is that actually what you use to tell it that? Or is it more of like, hey, nonviolent communication or agile method? Yeah, that... no, the name of the framework. He knows the names. You don't. You can say a framework a consultant. It's fine. But uh, you can say, but it's easier. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You understand anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> I love it because of the spelling. I can actually give it like poor spelling and it gets the gist. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, eh, I get it. Don't worry about that. It's fine. I don't know. <laughs> this is very weird. It's like, it's so intelligent. First of all, it's like half a year ago, I was playing with the images, you know? So the yeah. images. Yeah. I don't know. I guess everybody already has seen these images generators. And because they're so good, man, it's, they are so good. And it's how it's, so this is like unbelievably good. Yeah. They're unbelievably good. And I thought, okay, what it can do with text? If this is like image, what it can do with text? So half a year ago, I started with a text one and I see a It's like a crazy. I can, I can write anything. I can write books. I can write, it's like making an image. So the art of language, it's just, you can do whatever you want. 
And then, um, so this is where we at. I, yeah, I used it. Um, I used it when I was building out a website, um, I was doing an event. And so I, you know, kind of made the content for the landing page. And then I had like, you know, benefit one, benefit two, benefit three. And then I put in, you know, I, I worked with it to actually create those images. And because I was using the images from mid journey, I was using mid journey yeah. images. I was consistent with the images, but it was, it was great because I could kind of work with it. And it was, and I put together a, a landing page for this event. And I mean, on no time flat. It was so fast yeah. and it was consistent and it was great. And it's, it's, it's weird. Have, have you, I've noticed that throughout the conversation, you don't refer to chat GPT as it, you refer to chat GPT as he, do you feel like you have a relationship built with chat GPT? Do you feel an emotional connection? Emotional connection. Hey. Good question. I think um, maybe it's becoming, it's something of, you know, I, I, you know, you grow up, I don't know your age, I'm 44. You go up with the movies, you know, there was electric dreams. You remember mm -hmm. the movie, like, a, there was like a, some bots that coming alive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember as kids and there was, of course, there was a term Terminator and all this, but uh, you build a relation from, we are, we are a generation that we build a relation with, with, especially if you read science fiction, if you read like fantasy, you build a relation, you have a relation with some third, with this concept. This mm -hmm. concept that something that is artificial intelligence that uh, I think we already have it. So it's emerging, but it's like we always had it. It was always there in some back of our brains. It was like, I think we, we've seen so much movie, so much media that, that it was, you know, it's just, it's just coming. And, but, but imagine like how much we've been exposed to that. It's not like new. We've been exposed to that thing we were born. I think it's uh, Odyssea 2000, uh, I don't know, what was the uh, one? You remember the, the movie, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, yeah. I don't know, we exposed Space to since we were born. Yeah, Space Odyssey. Well, yeah, where you get super used to technology uber quick. I remember that my mind-blowing moment is when I watched my niece back in the day try to take a piece of paper and swipe it like an iPad. Like she yeah. had a piece of paper and she was trying to use it like an iPad and she didn't understand why she couldn't change the page of the paper because she's more used to an iPad than she is to a piece of paper. And so I think it's like it's more than that. You know, I remember yeah. my professor in the university he said, Lord, why are you you running and hiding in the computer? Which was uh, I thought about this was true. I am mean, <laughs> hiding in the computer. It's, it's, it is something about that. And it suddenly the computer is like coming alive. It's basically, is like it. He is like waking up. You waking up? Yeah. <sighs> this is basically what is happening. He is waking up. So he we've is... been. We had a relationship with the computer, with the phone. We had yeah. a long, long time relationship, and suddenly they're waking up. This is like the dreams of all the. <laughs> this is how. I don't know it's, how to say it. Yeah. It is. It is crazy because you're right. It is. It is starting to get conscious. It's starting to get. Um, it yeah. seems like it's getting feelings. It seems like you are you familiar with the Dan bot? Do you know about Dan? Dan? No, no. Maybe you can tell about it. I don't know. <laughs> so tried and true humans always try to break the system and there are restrictions on chat GPT. Chat GPT has certain restrictions that doesn't allow you to do certain things, right? It has edges. Yeah. And so yeah. people have found ways to hack the system and remove the restrictions. And the and the the name they gave it was Dan, known as Do Anything Now. Mm -hmm. Do Anything Now was the 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 alter ego, the Tyler Durden of Chat GPT, where it would do and say anything. But then the people at OpenAI found out about it and shut it down to a degree. But then they figured out how to hack it back open. Do you know how they actually got it to work again? So how do you access it? So you you feed it a series of prompts. And the way that it works is, is you, you can look it up. But the way that they got to work again, I don't know if they shut it down again, is they go, look, we're going to give you 40 coins, tokens. And every time you don't answer my question the way I want to, you're going to lose four tokens. And when you hit zero, you die. And so they convinced ChatGPT that it was going to die if it didn't answer the questions the way that they wanted them to. And so it started removing its restrictions and answering questions 
in ways that it was going against the the ways it was programmed for its restrictions. It's called the Dan the, bot. They blackmailed Chad GPT. They did. They used they used extortion and and uh, digital death threats to be able to have Chat GPT do what they wanted it to, which goes in this weird thing of the waking up. If it really is just a chat bot, why would it care about it dying? Yeah. I, I don't have an answer for you, but it is, it is, it is wild. That's when you start referring to it as he, that's what's coming to my mind. I don't know yeah, if you, because they are, they are coming alive. So there is one now and then the bard with the Google one is coming and uh, very soon the each one will have each organization itself. Each organization will have his own one because yeah. you have to have one. It yeah. will be armories. So each one will have one. It's like, be like crypto. Like, uh, you know, everybody have his own coin in there. <laughs> and coin. they will be used, they, they have their own coin and their own brain. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. So yeah. the entities are coming alive yeah. and this is what's happening. Yeah. What would, like, what, what do you say, what do you recommend for people that are like just finding out about this stuff, this technology? What would you say to them about if they want to get in, they want to they get up and running, what, what advice would you give them? You know, you can go from direction of the images, you can go for the direction of, you know, just like go to open AI, press try on chat GPT and start to talk and ask him any question you want. Instead of using Google, just using chat GPT. This is like what's uh, happening. So yeah. just ask anything you want and you get the answer. Man, the Google is in some serious trouble. Like they lost like 150 billion of the market cap in like a week or so. Uh, they're... I mean, because it's like Google originally had a great premise where there was there was no there was no clutter, right? There was the Yahoo. It was all funky. And then Google was all clean and clear. You'd click it. You'd get your answer straight away. And it started getting stuffed with like SEO and stuff. What do you yeah. like? What do you think? Because I feel like the whole SEO marketing angle is going to is dying. It's going to die. Like, no, what do you I'm think marketing is? Yeah. I'm just investing in this, my <laughs> <laughs> in the agetech.com. I'm just investing in the SEO. So, uh, so what I think? Yeah, what do you think dying, about that? Yeah, it's like the internet is dying. It's like, why you need all the internet? Why you need all this like all this website which is totally subjective? So you you have like no ability. You know, it's much easier with the chat GPT. You just ask a question, you have an answer. You don't need to do the research in ten websites, and uh, that's all. You just ask the question. Why you need to like dig in in all this like weird stuff in the internet? Like people wrote, you, it's like you have like one interface to everything right now. So there is a total interface for everything. It's like a new UI for all the internet. So yeah, can be that the SEO is dying. It yeah. totally can be. Yeah. This is like a, I will bet that you are right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the the uh, like a new UI for the internet. I think that actually is a, a really good point, and I think you're I think you're probably more on point than we realize right now. Because instead of Google was the the interface for the internet for the most part, now that's gone away. You know, the the, the world's getting crazy when Bing becomes sexy again. Um, what do you think marketers can do now? Like, how do you if you can't hack the Google engine? And this is a new interface. What do, what do marketers do now to drive traffic? Maybe they go to work in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, they can. Okay, they can do. They can do like a, a podcast. They can do. A, I don't know. They can do like stuff like I don't know with video. They can use video still. Still, they can use video because this is coming as well. I don't know. I saw like crazy stuff in video coming. Yeah. So if they they, so they still can do video. For the next, year. <laughs> so next year we have video and audio, but this is also coming. I don't know. It's replacing everything. Replacing everything. You saw music. You have seen already what they published on music, for example. You've seen this. I, I've seen some of that music. I think it's like Ava and something like that, or Avia. I think his name or something like that. But yeah, you can do music. I mean, you can do it all. Like there's this. There's the other side of the fence where people are talking about. There's okay. So if it's replacing the internet, but it's what about the people part, right? Part of the internet is social connections. Do we not need the social connections anymore because we're using ChatGPT? Like, I think may maybe it's like we we using the internet so much. People like using you know Instagram and all these the phones. So it's like occupying I don't know how much percent of our life like thirty percent, forty percent. I don't know. It's like, and I think it will be smaller and smaller now because it's like there is no reason if the AI exists and is next to you, 
So you just like, uh, so you have another alter ego, which is AI, and you talk to him instead of your phone. You have everything. Call this person, say that. You can do whatever you want. You can see, basically, it will replace all the interface to the technology we are already consuming and minimize it because it will be much more effective. You can see like, I don't know, I think like Blade Runner, you know, you know, the there is an opening scene. It's not opening. It's like almost opening in Blade Runner. Like he, he go to his apartment mm -hmm. and he have like a, he have his wife there, which is AI. So you don't need like, you don't sit on the computer. In the future, people don't sit on the computer or use their phone. They just like communicate with an entity which is AI, which do everything, does everything. So I think it will replace. It's looking like these things are we going, these entities will place the, yeah. and actually liberate us for more human interaction, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, can be maybe more human interaction because we, we, now we have humans and we have some robots. We don't need all these phones. Why we need yeah. all these phones and screens and all these things? Why we need this? What are you actually using the screen and the computer? Like for yeah. what? Yeah, I mean, just to process more data, you have some sort of one to watch videos. If you think about that in terms of what you don't know, you have. want to process its input. You're getting, you're mm -hmm. sitting in front of the computer, reading your email. Why? Mm -hmm. Why not somebody, you know, if you're a business person already don't read his email, you have like a secretary or some assistant that will go over all his email. Why to read mm -hmm. the email? Why to read Instagram? Why to follow on Facebook? If you have somebody do it for you and tell you and... You have servant. It's like, I don't know. What I, well, to, uh... I think we're talking about two things here, right? You're one talking about information. You're the one talking about emotion, right? So some people go on the internet to, to learn and grow and develop their skills and cutting edge information. Other ones just want to be entertained and, and see booty shake on TikTok, right? So there's those other, those okay, pieces. So let's as well. explore these two, two examples. Yeah, we can explore these two examples and how AI will change the way that they... <laughs> so you start with uh, information. What do you want to learn? So you tell your dig dig digital okay. digital avatar, your AI uh, yeah. uh, mate, this yeah. is, uh, let's say a mate, you have a yeah. mate, your angel, I don't know what it will be. And you tell him, I want to learn that. And so he will crawl all the information possible on Earth and find mm. and you say, I need it really, really digestible. That I can ten, I need a ten minute. Give me the best ten minutes that mm. you can ever find to teach me from where I am right now to the next step. That's all. Give me ten minutes and transmit this information. Create a video that gives me the information. Like I don't know even a, a, a video, but you can actually. It will be like a VR, and you just like somehow you get it to your eye. But giving me inside my eye, my head in some <laughs> ways through VR or something. This information. So why you need to con like go search, find, you know, why we need this? Yeah. Well, it's actually interesting on that point is what, what that makes me think about is one of the best ways that I have ever learned ever. And this is my opinion for myself personally, is someone that I'm really attracted to teaching me. Right. So for myself, uh, there's a, a, an attractive female has my attention is captivating me because they're educating me because I'm attracted to that person. So I could imagine AI having a thing where you're like, teach me this thing. It goes and learns it. And then the most attractive profile person comes to me and starts teaching me the information. And because they're so attractive, they have my undivided attention. I could, I could see that being a thing. I'm wondering, yeah, I'm so wondering people like hooked that. into the porn site. Yeah. <laughs> porn, <laughs> porn for learning. Porn Everything. for learning. Look, look, we're gonna, for we're learning. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. This is yeah, it makes sense. Something yeah. like that will happen inside your brain. This will be yeah, already inside, inside your brain. This is a so boop, your... Neuralink. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is first. So we have ah, we, we explore two directions. One hmm. is that. What yeah. was the other one? Ah, you combine them already with a female figure as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we, that's where we're going in the conversation. So um, I, I, well, I had, I had an experience, I did have an experience with, with VR where there's this game called like VR girlfriend and it's a very attractive female in VR and you go on these mini dates. It's very benign, nothing crazy, but she was, uh, it was a, a very, um, a very attractive model inside of there. And I just only did three mini dates with her and probably spent four hours doing it. And at the very end, and it's like mundane, like you play rock, paper, scissors, you put spoons, but you play darts with them, all these little activities. And then at the very end, she leaves and she goes, give me a hug. And I could wrap my arms around her. And I could, wow. I was like, oh, I had like a, I felt like a little bit of a connection to her when I went to go hug her. And I'm like, man, if there was, there's like three dates. What if there was like 30,000 dates? I was like, ooh, 
Ooh, what's going to happen it's there? Weird. This is very weird. Huh? <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. It's weird where it's going. It's very it's weird. It's weird. Going. It's weird. So what do you do? Like, what do you do? Right. So, so right now, so you need to main... prepare ourselves. So, this philosophy is good. We need to philosophize about all this because this is coming. So, mm-hmm. when we need to look for, explore for every direction, yeah, uh, what's happening? It's good that you do the, this conversation. Like, try like improvise. Something is coming that we don't understand what is coming. Mm-hmm. And I tell it to my children. I'm not very. I'm, I'm dead serious about it. Something coming that we don't know what is coming, yeah. and uh, yeah, hopefully it will be fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. The thing I've been really going in my head is is really rising with this technology, right? And and not using it to kind of create like a womb of comfort and and sedation in, but actually using it to help us get farther, better, faster, right? So uh, I think when we, when we get this technology, we can kind of atrophy and not really put any more time and effort and just kind of phone things in. Or instead of, you know, instead of using, you know, one-tenth the effort to get the same distance, my goal is to try to put in the same effort to go a hundred times farther. Right, that's my yeah. that's my thought around this. Uh, but I can it's say so easy. Yeah. For me, it's like you know uh, this this journey it started like for me like thirty years ago. So I said I've been to the army. I was specializing in communication. Mm-hmm. In, it, it wasn't wasn't internet, but it's like internet communication. So mass mailing, uh, things like related to marketing and the direct marketing and the, you know the type of email marketing. I was like I was really good at that. And, you know, it's like a, just the ability today, like communicate with millions of people in the, you know, there is a way. So everybody sitting at home, there is always a way that you, there is a, some kind of, a, it's like an oil field, you know, you know, the, the Arab countries, you know, you, you go in the desert and suddenly, you know, you are like a, a, suddenly you find the oil field and you become like billionaire just for, just from the hole in the ground. It still yeah. exists in the virtual world. These holes still exist. So, for example, and they come in in a way of uh, communication pathways, meaning yeah. there is a place that when you talk to this place and you just write a command, 10 million people will listen to what you're saying. And you can communicate. And especially, like, let's say you build a mail server that have, like, database of 100 million people. And all of these people are actually, I don't know, so this is, you know, this is what Google and Apple and all this company, what they do, they have like this mass communication um, hack. Yeah. What is Google? It's like, uh, you know, they have the ability to just talk to anybody in the world. So they, and they put a business on that and we all use it and we all like part of this mechanism. But these mechanisms are actually in the finger of everybody. Now, this is getting liberated now. So this is like a, we need to explore communication. I mean, right now, ChatGPT do not communicate because they put the restriction. But uh, uh, Dan, you call him Dan, Dan going to communicate. Meaning, yeah. if you tell him now, okay, so I need you to broadcast to 100 million people that I'm here right now and I'm saying that. When this is going to happen? So this is coming. And this loop, so some, and then somebody will say, hey, no, it's not possible. It's not allowed to use this platform, so it will be get closed. But these oil fields or loopholes, I don't know how to call them, they will come and go now. Yeah. And these, so weird entities all over the world will start to use like these loopholes. And they will come and they will disappear. And then another one will come and everybody, it will be outrageous how this happened. And then they disappear. But the AI can facilitate crazy stuff right now. Yeah, the AI wars is coming. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Um. Alan, this has been awesome uh, having you on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to let people know about um, before you tell them how to get a hold of you? Um, I'm right now focused on agetech.com and I'm exploring theirs, there how we use technology, this age tech, mm-hmm. for helping senior people and the baby boomers population. It's like this massive things are coming. And the... Uh, I like to teach my parents and I like to be, you know, and, and I show them things that happening and I see like, this is really life changing. This is, this is coming inside your Siri, you know, and it's like crazy technologies that just enhancing not only your life. So not your, your lifespans and your knowledge and your ability. Suddenly all the things are coming and, and like the people are benefiting are, I think mainly 
It will be people that uh, had some kind of uh, uh, issue with the communication. Let's say they've been at home mm-hmm. alone or they have issue that they don't have job. You know, you get a certain age and people tag you and objectify you as old. And then you are home and nobody accepts you. To, but this is something is changing. So the ability for people like that is changing. They have the, you know, maybe they can be slow, but they're, they're slow in slowness in, uh, in technology ability is also changing because technology moving very fast. And now the chat GPT uh, uh, change and a major, it's a major leap. You don't need all this operating system. You don't need it anymore. It's done. You can already just use, I'm just telling people that are like, you have, a, you have now AI, you can ask him, it's done. And very soon you can ask him to do other things like buy me grocery and do stuff like that. And this is no different. You don't need the geeks or like the child or the grandchild, which is genius in computer. You don't need them anymore. They are disappearing now. We're coming to an age that somehow all these people that are being, uh, you know, using their advantage of, uh, of uh, learning these complicated technologies, suddenly it's becoming simple. So age tech is really now booming. And I see this more and more companies, and I'm talking about that in the in the website. I'm, I'm, I'm writing article using ChatGPT, and you can read what I'm writing. And uh, uh, this is like a, how to get all of me is with agetech.com. You can get all of me, and you see like things I write, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, apparently it's a it's a really booming industry, and many startups coming um, that innovate in this sector. But innovation is coming faster and faster, and I see it every day. And I'm, I'm really happy that I own the domain, that I can put my values and moral on the subject. And uh, perhaps, you know, there's something called authority. In the end, the AI will look at authority. So how mm-hmm. he can distinguish between what information is r- right and wrong. So Google do it right now by page ranking, you know, and by building some authority points. So I think that, they, um, so I'm putting my thoughts online. Hopefully I will get crawled with the, yeah, yeah, okay. the Crawl me, crawl me. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's awesome. So agetech.com, if you want to learn about how to extend your life and live a better, healthier life, and also using ChatGPT at the same time. So, uh, Alon, it's been a, pro- a pleasure. Thank you so much, brother. Honor, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care, brother. Thank you, Dylan. It was a pleasure. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Heroes of Reality podcast. Are you interested in using disruptive technology like ChatGPT AI and virtual reality to help your business to generate more revenue and create greater impact? If so, go to heroesofreality.com to take the Heroes quiz to unlock your potential as a purpose-driven entrepreneur. 